Hi everybody, I hope you are all well. It is a properly cold morning here in the south of England. It really feels proper autumn now. Woke up with, you know, proper frost on the windows and oh, it, it's just, oh, it charges me up with so much energy. I fucking love it. Um, <laughs> what an opener for a review. Um, it's the day after bonfire night here. Oddly, there were tons of fireworks at Halloween by me, but hardly any fireworks on bonfire night. I know, very weird, but we have had, um, there was a lot of bad weather yesterday, so I don't know if any um, like local bonfires were cancelled during the course of the day because it had been raining all day. Um, so that that's probably most likely um but yeah it's it's been uh I, I can't remember if it's one or two weeks since i last did oh no it's two weeks because yeah last weekend um my sister um came to to see us you know with her um husband and kids and such so we had a family sunday last sunday so that's why i didn't upload any videos there we go. Just <laughs> trying to get my diary in my head of what's been going on. Um, and yeah, it's just, you know, being busy as always, working and all that jazz. Um, and during that time, I have been reading the book I am here to review, which is Georgiana, the Duchess of Devonshire by Amanda Foreman. Now, before I start, when I announced this um, video or uh, in my, my last book review, you know, where I say, okay, this is my next read, whatever, I mentioned um, how in the film version of this book, she's referred to as Georgiania, and how that really irked me, because I'm like, no, it's Georgiana. My sister actually sent me a message correcting me, saying, no, 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 it is uh, Georgiania. Georgiana is like the um, Italian version, um, but I don't, I don't like Georgiania. It just it grates me. I don't know what it is. So, apologies for saying in previous video that they got her name wrong when actually it's right. It's me being wrong. Um, but I'm going to refer to her as Georgiana, just because I don't like the the saying Georgiania. I, I don't, I don't know what it is. It just irks the hell out of me. So. Georgiana it is. Okay, so there we go. I've, I've cleared the air on that. Um, <laughs> now, how do I know about Georgiana in, in general? Right, so this goes back quite a bit. So 2008, the film The Duchess came out and I saw that with I think I was with my mum. I can't. I'm not too sure, but I remember buying my mum the DVD of it and uh, and such for like a Mother's Day present or, or maybe a birthday or a Christmas present. But I I remember. I distinctly remember buying a DVD for her, and um I, and I've seen it multiple times since um since it was released and such. Not like every year or anything like that. Like I think I've seen it maybe like three times in total. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, and previously to that, me, my sister and my mum had been to Devonshire, to Chatsworth House, where she lived, where she was Duchess. And so we knew about her through the history of that place. And my sister had read this book. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that the last time my sister was um, visiting me, what would be like nearly three years ago now, thanks to COVID, um, we went into um, Cheltenham and to a charity bookshop and they had this book. And my sister was like, oh yeah, you should read it. It's really, really fascinating read and now I'm finally gotten around to reading it so I knew of Georgiana I, I knew of um, her her history and such um, but only really from stuff that I learned at, at Chatsworth House in a visit years before and the film The Duchess so even though I knew stuff in a way I didn't really know her I really learnt about her through the means of this book. Um, and Georgiana, um, as I said, was a Duchess of Devonshire. She um, met the Duke of Devonshire twice before she married him on her 17th birthday. And she was bound to him through marriage for the rest of her life. And she went through some crazy stuff in her life. So he was very much about, you've got to produce me a son, but she produced daughters. Um, she did produce a son to him, but after 
after the daughters um and she had to deal with the fact that her husband was free to have extramarital affairs but she was not able to um she uh, was a highly political very modern woman she um for example she breastfed her children herself which was unheard of at that time completely unheard of for a woman of rank to do that um, she was highly political. She very much got involved with um, politics and she used, because she was lauded as being this most fashionable, most glamorous, everyone wants to be around her, everyone wants to hear what she wants to say. She used her voice for political purposes. So she, um, she knew she had a great power and she knew how to use that power. Um, but also that power can lead to her downfall. Um, and also she had to deal with this loveless marriage where she was felt like she was absolute nothing. And with the Duke, he made various choices, including, um, which is very well known in history, um, going into a menage a trois with Georgina and her best friend Bess so yeah but he wouldn't allow her to do kind of a similar thing with the man that she was attracted to so it was it was a very very tense you know relationship and she but she had to come off as completely poised completely you know good and and fashionable and happy and such when she wasn't which is, you know, very, very sad. And various other events went on in her life. Um, obviously, I'm not going to... I have named some specific, like the Menage a Trois, but I've not said details, you know, too much about it and such. And um, there were other terrible events that plagued her life. And she truly is a tragic figure. Now, here's the kicker. Her descendants is princess diana lady diana spencer who obviously died very tragically um uh, at, a, at a very young age and we all know the story of her and um the now king charles relationship um and really really frustratingly the film literally only covered events in Georgiana's life and only told them in a way that linked to Diana's story. Because so that, that was the whole thing. They were like, before Diana, there was Georgiana and how these two women are linked through history. And it's like, yeah, they're linked by their DNA, but there were things that they both had okay there is some similarity but they're still completely different and they had other completely different things happen in their lives they're completely different women but this film went no they're identical and um, to be honest i'm going to talk about it a bit more in a bit but that film i think basically spat on georgiana's legacy i've said it i've said it there we go but let's talk about this book so amanda foreman uh, has chronicled the life of georgiana and overall i think she did well with this book it is succinctly written um it's written to really bringing out georgiana's personality um her joyful radiance um your 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 lord, lord. <laughs> i can't speak <laughs> lord lord i can't oh my gosh i can't say that word that word okay i'll say it another way you are drawn to her um and yeah you can tell that amanda truly fell in love with georgiana as she as she researched her wrote her story you can feel it every second throughout reading this book undeniably now the problem that i have with that and actually it's quite funny it's quite ironic but at the introduction she actually talks about for about uh, how writers fall in love with their subjects and how it can affect the way in which they write about them and i don't know if she even realizes that that's what happened here but but amanda very clearly 
adored Georgiana, as she wrote, to the degree that she makes Bess, the best friend who gets involved in the menage a trois, to be an absolute bitch. And I'm like, thinking about it, no, because I had this conversation with my, with, uh, my sister uh, via VMs on our phone this morning, because I finished it this morning. Bess wasn't a bitch. She was a woman in a certain situation where she was right. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to reveal a little bit here, but not too much. She was having the shit kicked out of her by her husband. He was cheating on her. He was making her feel like she was the scum of the earth, and she had young boys that she needed to protect. So by being involved with the, she was able to take those children out of that house make sure they're in a place where they're being looked after and she was able to find relief from the pain and agony that she was going through every single day. I agree with my sister, I don't believe that she loved him at all. I, I believe that she found comfort um, in, in the situation of Georgiana's home and Georgiana and, and Bess were the closest of friends. Um, it was the only real friendship that Georgiana ever had in her life because Bess was totally brutally honest with her about various things and she felt and became her confidant that she could she could talk to her about anything possible. Um, and then the Duke goes and sleeps with her. But I don't see Bess as an evil person and Bess was friends with Georgiana to the end of her life. You know, it's it it's this this very awkward situation but at the end of the day she Georgiana it was her one thing her her one friendship and she couldn't fall she couldn't break away from that so Bess was around her 24 7 whether she liked it or not and she had to come to terms with that uh in on the multiple different ways um but I don't see Bess as intrinsically evil I don't see her as a bitch. I see her as a woman trying to escape a cage that she had no way of escaping on her own. Um, and so, yeah, and my sister actually sent me a, a link to a book about Bess, which makes her human, um, which I would be intrigued to read now that I've gotten through this, where she is portrayed as basically an utter bitch. Um, and that really frustrates me. Especially as a as a historical biographer, you should be able to look right about the various people um, in who you are who you were writing about with no judgment or anything like that. I suppose you could potentially say, like say like if it's about a mystery and go, okay, this is what I think. Like say for example, um, uh, oh that. Uh, Inspector Witcher. Um, so the uh, case that um, the the first book. Hang on, I'm going to have to look it up. Um, where it, it was um, the murder of a, a a baby boy. Well, he was he was about yeah, he was still a baby, um, and uh, in a household, and it's beautifully um, written. Uh, the suspicions of Mr. Witcher, that's it, sorry. I couldn't think, I was thinking there's another word, there's another word in this title and I couldn't think, it was just, it was suspicions. So, um, yeah, Mr. Witcher was a, uh, this detective who's brought on this case of a house that is shut up for the night, no one goes in, no one leaves, it's totally silent and yet the baby has disappeared from uh, its bed and they find the body of the baby in the toilet outside the house with its, its slit. Uh, his throat slit and investigation of what happened. Now, the writer, she presents all of the different facts about everything that happened. Right at the end of the book, she has her own separate chapter where she goes, okay, this is my theory of what, what happened. She makes it very clear it's a separate chapter. She doesn't have it linked in any possible way, um, you know, not integrated in any possible way in any earlier chapters. And then when they made a drama out of it, they made her idea be what the Mr. Witcher suspected it to be. And it's like, no, that's not that right. But at least the writer did that when she said, okay, this is how I feel about this situation. Whereas when it comes to Georgiana, Amanda, who's just basically 
put all of her thoughts and such into every single chapter of this book which is unfortunate because as i said it makes Bess seem like an utter bitch it makes the the duke this intrinsically evil man um i don't think he was evil I, he had his flaws of course he did but he wasn't like evil evil to me is like you know serial killers and all that lot um he wasn't evil but he wasn't a good man whatsoever um yeah make lord gray like this angelic man they make fox like the really funny friend and it's just like oh, this, oh that kind of that kind of irked me i'd rather know about characters through the historical text that we know um than through the interpretation of the person who was writing it, especially with historical biography, you've got, you know, all of these documents and such that we have available to us. And I know people can read a plain text and read it. One person can read it one way, one person can read it another and have two completely different interpretations. But at the same time, it's like, especially when these are big political figures who we've got a lot of information about what uh, uh, throughout um their their time of being alive because of the political figures that they are it just kind of feels like to then throw in a personality when you don't necessarily know the personality through the specific lines that you're reading it just yeah that kind of irked me from time to time so even though it is well written it is well paced um it brings to life her story very well at the same time i found it quite frustrating to 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 get through because of this character interpretation um as to the story of georgiana's life there was some there was as i said there was a lot of stuff that happened with her and i do like the fact that amanda is not afraid to confront the bad as well as the good so that that's also another thing about when you're writing various figures whether they're through history, uh, you know, from the history, whether they're current, uh, currently alive, whatever. In order to truly understand a person, you've got to take the good as well as the bad. Amanda does do that, although at some times I feel like her love for Georgiana means that she doesn't go too in depth with, you know, her darker moods and such. So in, in her later life, Georgiana, um, well, is in a way you could say early life still because she she died in her 40s in her late 40s so she wasn't very old at all um and i think it's very fair to say even though uh, obviously at the time because we didn't have these kind of um medical you know related um disorders and such i think and my sister agrees that it's very clear that she suffered from some kind of mental um disorder she suffered deeply from depressions throughout her life as well um but because of the various events that happened to her she went through a lot of things and she developed like gambling addictions drug addiction drinking um in order to cope with it all and I think it's it's fair to say that yeah she she could have possibly even obviously this is me speculating with absolutely no medical related um qualification or any anything to say to give me some kind of authority on on this matter whatsoever um I would speculate that perhaps she had some possibly a kind uh, yeah I suppose a a personality disorder um there are there are many different types and i'm not i don't want to speculate exactly which which type and i don't know all so there's there's absolutely no point in me trying to to <laughs> pick one as it were to to define um a possible dis personality disorder that she had um but very clearly she suffered deeply from various forms of depression, various levels of depression as well. And 
to have gone through what she went through. I'm not surprised at points where she wrote the poetry, some of the most astonishing poetry. Um, so I'm going to read you a poem. I'm not going to say exactly what has happened when she writes this poem because spoilers. Um, but here we go. Unhappy child of indiscretion, poor slumberer on, on a breast forlorn, pledge of reproof of past transgression, dear thou unfortunate to be born. For thee a, 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 supp a suppliant of addressing to heaven thy mother fair would dare, but conscious blushes strain, stain the blessing, and sighs suppress my broken prayer. But spite of these, my mind unshaken, in present duty turn to thee. Thou long repented, near forgotten, thy day shall loved and guarded be. And should a thou a generous world bring thee... Oh no, my phone's going off. Oh, sorry guys, I'll be back in a minute. Hi everyone, so sorry about that. Um, someone trying to call me. Um, so I was reading this very lovely poem, so I am going to try that again. Um, right, um, so I'll start the third stanza, which is where I think it got interrupted by my phone going off. Um, but spite of these, my mind unshaken, in present duty turns to thee. Thou long repented, near forgotten, the day shall loved and guarded be. And should the though ungenerous world embraided, th embraided thee for mine and for thy father's ill, a nameless mother oft shall assist thee, a hand unseen protect thy still. And thou to rank and wealth a stranger, thy life a humble course must run. Soon shalt thou learn to fly the danger which I too late have learnt to shun. Meanwhile, in these subsequent valleys, thou mayest thou live in safe content, for innocence may smile at malice, and thou, oh, thou art innocent. I, I, I never, because I, I, I obviously like the history that I learned when looking around her house uh, and the Duchess, the film, I hadn't read her poetry, and her poetry is just so beautiful and full of um, her her passions, her depression, her 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 soul. It's absolutely beautiful. So there are a lot of ticks for this book, but I've also got the cross of the the issue of passing judgment on people that I would have preferred didn't happen. Um, so yeah, it's just. Oh gosh, I, uh, yeah, so even though I did like it, I couldn't love it. And the thing with the film of the Duchess is that, as I said, they'll only talk about things that linked to Diana. They, Kira Knightley, I think, was completely the wrong person to cast. She's not good in this film. And the only scene that she is great in is right near the end of the film. I'm not going to say why because of spoilers, but it's one scene and she is actually the lead. She's in like every single scene of this film. And there's only one film, uh, one scene that's good with her for me. So, yeah, not good. Um, as soon as that one event near the end of the film happens, it's like the rest of her life she was perfectly content and she lived da 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 da. No, no, that was the downward spiral. That was the serious downward spiral, the beginning of the downward spiral and things, oh my God, the horrific things that she went through after that for them to just go, no, we're not going to acknowledge them is a slap in the face it is spitting on her legacy and i'm sorry i am actually really pissed at the filmmakers for having done that that was so wrong of them to do um i honest to god feel like this film should not have been made um this film was badly put together and um it should just be wiped from history because of of what that did to georgiana's legacy it's just it's wrong 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 i don't like it um i usually i love period dramas but this one i'm like uh -uh, no i don't like it in fairness about bess they do um because i've been i've been you know re-watching and such this morning while um 
getting ready for the day and everything they did um do her well in that she is not an evil bitch like she is portrayed in this book um i think they portrayed her um naturally and correctly but it is like oh why is it that's the one good thing that they got right in this in this whole film like there should be more and it is very 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 politically fueled i know that politics obviously played a big part in georgiana's life and such but it kind of feels like it's all about the Whig party we're not going to delve into more deeper psychological impacts of things you know we're going to keep this nice and bright and smiley that's not what her life was underneath the fashion underneath the um focus underneath that glare everything she what she had to deal with some dark shit in her life and um yeah to just wipe that out that's 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 spitting on her legacy for me so i can't watch that film again i'm sorry i won't i i just i won't do it so yeah not fond of the film guys so <laughs> those are my thoughts on georgiana the duchess of devonshire by amanda foreman so my usual questions would i read this again i think i would yes but i also would feel like i would need to read that other book that my sister recommended straight after about bess um in order to um have the balanced view um would i read another book by amanda foreman well i don't know any of her other books so i don't know what her other subjects are so it would have to be something that is of interest to me um and yeah i would be interested to see if she has the same kind of glorifying the subject matter the the way um she has with this book how she adores georgiana um in the, her other books but you know we would just have to see um would i recommend this to anyone yeah if somebody was interested in um georgian history and you know various um wealthy people and politics of the time it definitely would fit them um but yeah i would be a little bit like but but yeah how she portrayed bess is uh not quite right um <laughs> but yeah I, I i wouldn't feel weird about recommending it to anyone um but yeah it's she was such a fascinating woman with a fascinating story who went through utter hell in her life and had the scars the physical scars to prove it and such and died at such a young age and yet all people think about as it were uh, the links to diana and they are two completely different women but nobody wants to nobody wants to look at that and that is so fucking sad so yeah georgiana absolutely extraordinary extraordinary woman and uh i can't believe that i didn't know her full story until now and i'm glad i know her now so there we go so there's my thoughts on georgiana the duchess of devonshire have you read this book i'd love to know what you, I'd love to know what you think you can leave me a comment comment box below give me a thumbs up thumbs down tell me to you let you say and i will be back with announcing my next five reads uh so yeah and let's see what uh what i'll be reading next all right guys bye